Hey, it's diddly diddly D, and I'm bringing the good word to thee. Hallelujah. And the good word is coming out of the book of uh, 2 Samuel, chapter 22, verses 1 through 4 is all I'm going to be reading. And I want you to go check this out when we're done here. You go read it for yourself. Um, fill up on God's word. Um, what I mean by that is um, you can watch me eat a plate of food. You're not going to get full. You can watch me. But I want you to go fill up on God's word yourself. You know, eat some, man. You know what I mean? We can watch other people eat, but that don't get us full in the physical, same in the spiritual realm you got to go read this word as well any preacher pastor um good brother or sister bringing the word you know part of their ministry to you go read it afterwards okay it's nice to hear it but you got it's nice to see somebody eating a big steak but i want to go get a piece of that myself so i want you to go get a piece of god's word i want you to eat that it's a spiritual food health food that is like no other in the world praise the lord now it's diddly diddly d and i'm bringing the good word to thee um this to d to the mac daryl mack and i'm on the attack for the kingdom of heaven guys and um it's just a beautiful thing to be bringing god's word here in a little um fun segment of my ministry is a bible minute with the mac and uh, it's me diddly diddly d <laughs> don't mind me guys it's early in the morning <clears throat> and um i'm just um celebrating another day of life another day i thank god oh fa my father in heaven and i'm going to show my brother proud today and i'm going to get up fight i got my cross up on my shoulder you can't see it it's a spiritual cross that i put my life down and i pick up god whether where I'm, if I'm working or volunteering, whatever I'm doing, I got my cross on my shoulder, and that means I'm letting the Holy Spirit lead the way. I'm following Jesus, like He says, "Follow me," and His example, which means let God lead the way in His life, which means we do it today. First Peter two twenty one says that Jesus left a perfect example for all of men to follow, all of us to follow, and that's what we do: follow Jesus. Not the Pope, not the Watchtower Society, not Farrakhan and Muhammad, not Joseph Smith and the Mormons, and um, what other ones are there? Uh, not Buddha, you know what I'm saying? And not the Pope and, uh, you know, all the Roman Catholic stuff. It's foolishness, nonsense to the fullest extent. We follow Jesus. Praise the Lord. And uh, we're going to get into this. Um, let's see. Praise God for... For God, praise the God, praise for God's deliverance is what it's called. The title heading into these uh, chapter twenty-two of uh, Second Samuel uh, verses one through four, and I'll get fired up on this in a minute. Holy Spirit, have your way, <clears throat> and I uh, just want you to know it's it's um, amazing how people will come after you. I'm a good person, right? I can say that you know with hundred percent accuracy. I'm a good person today in the Lord. And I wasn't before because I, I followed the flesh, which is Lucifer, right? Wasn't a bad guy, but, you know, I, I wasn't perfect, you know what I'm saying? But here's the thing. David was a great guy. He was a, one, of, one of King Saul's um, mighty warriors in the army of King Saul's, um, you know, and at, that, at that time. King Saul loved David like a son until all the people, after every battle that David went out into, and he had God Almighty coming in, giving him the V-I-C-T-O-R-Y victory against bigger armies than, than David had, but God would slay him because of David's faith. Now, those um, enemies that David was slaying, God can slay in your life today. I don't care if it's physical, people coming at you, lost souls doing Lucifer the Loser's work with no reward, trying to bring you down and chop you down like a, uh, a lumberjack with a tree. Or spiritual warfare is what you deal with in your head. When you get those crazy thoughts, you hear voices. Yeah, you hear them. It's, it's Satan whispering in your ear. You remember the devil and the, and the angel on your shoulders. That's true, right? But they're not on your shoulders They're because you, know, you can't see a spirit, but they speak to you. And you hear it. So when I hear a thought of like, hey, be depressed, hey, go kill yourself, you know, because, uh, you know, this is what Satan does. He tries to get me out of the picture, right? Boom. So I can't fulfill God's perfect plan and purpose. But here's the thing. Thank you, Holy Spirit, leading the way. Oh, thank you, Lord, is that God will slay your enemies, man, just like he was with King David, or David at the time, before he took over and took over the reign of King, when he bumped Saul out of the way, because uh, Saul just had to go, and God rewarded David for his love, his loyalty, and right here, praise for God's deliverance from King Saul, his enemy, who was his best friend. Your best friend will turn on you. Your daughters, your sons, your wives, your husbands, um, your neighbor. If they don't have a true relationship and be Holy Spirit filled with God, they will turn on you in a second. Believe me, man. I've had so many people turn on me from the place where I live. And won't mention names, obviously. But the people here, man, I've helped out so much. Big deal. I do what I do because of God. And these people have the worst opinions of me. And you know what it is God revealed to me? It's because what they say about me, they really... 
it reflects on how they feel about themselves. So anybody in your life that you've helped out that, that put you down or just put you down for no reason or whatever, or they think they're perfect because they sin differently than you do, because they sin differently than you, they think they're better than you. That ain't the case at all. It's reflecting on how they feel about you. I live my life for God in heaven. I answer to God in heaven alone. I don't care what nobody thinks of me respectfully saying, yeah, you want people to love you, but Jesus was perfect and nobody, and they turned their back on him. So Jesus said, the world hated me first. They're going to hate you. Je here's, here's David, right? Being a man of God, right? Jesus was God in the flesh and they hated him just for being a good person, you know, and being more popular than they were and this and that, you know what I mean? And it's a shame where I live. So many people, enemies coming against me. But guess what? I get the victory, the V-I-C-T-O-R-Y victory, because the little demons that are on these people can't compare to the God that I serve is almighty and bigger than any demons. All of them put together can't come close to a God, a God almighty, Father Yahweh, God almighty in heaven, guys. And David knew that. And David didn't just call on um, God in the midst of, you know, being under attack and God kept him safe, right? Because, uh, he was calling on God. He had faith in God. David was a man after God's own heart. And that's what I'm trying to be every day. But people hate you just because the world loves its own kind. Just keep that in mind, guys. I'm a, Bra I'm a Baltimore Ravens fan, so I couldn't go to Detroit Lions Stadium and people embrace me with my Ray Lewis jersey on. I would be hated as a Christian here on Team Lucifer, all these people are on, whether they're Christians or not. If they're in, not in their word, they're in the world. They're on that other team, and they hate you, and it's just the way it is. But um, don't answer a fool to their folly. And But back to the program here. Thank you, Holy Spirit. A little righteous anger there. You know, my feelings get hurt, too. I'm just a human being, but God sews me back up and says, feel sorry for these people. You know, they don't have any love and respect for you after all you've done for them and all I do for them each and every day. They don't even call on me and thank me for waking up. They don't thank me for the food they're eating. They don't thank me for all the little toys and all the money they have. So don't expect anything from you, to you. I said, wow. So I just roll with the punches just like David does, man. And our glory is in heaven, guys. Our rewards are in heaven, everybody. Hang in there, okay? Now, praise for God's deliverance. Here's David giving praise and thanks to God. He prayed for her for help. He got it. And now he's giving God thanks and praise. And I want you to go read Psalm 18, um, verses 1 through 50. And read uh, what I'm reading here. Read the whole thing, actually, the whole chapter of 22. But I'm only going to verse 4, and we're going to get into it now. Then David spoke to the Lord's words of this song on the day when the Lord had delivered him from the hand of the enemies and from the hand of Saul. Verse 2, And he said, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. Wow, it's so beautiful. Verse 3. The God of my strength in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold, my refuge, my Savior, you save me from violence. Verse 4. Wow, it's beautiful. I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Whew, man, and so shall you be saved from your enemies, guys, okay? Just know that whatever, whether it's physical, lost souls, like, you know, in the flesh coming after you, like Saul was to, to uh, David, or uh, a spiritual battle with the demons and Lucifer himself trying to, you know, cripple you and take you out as well, because they all try to steal, kill, and destroy your happiness, your joy, your life in the end. And just know that God Almighty is your shield and buckler, and He will protect you and sustain you through anything that this enemy in this world can throw at you. Just know that, hallelujah, because we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength, which means David had a direct line to God. And Jesus came, the apostles had to run to Jesus, God in the flesh. Now, God lives right within us. Right within us, man. It's so beautiful. Call upon the Lord when your enemies come to attack you. And don't answer a fool to their folly, which means, unless you're a fool too, and I'm guilty sometimes, I get a righteous anger, I get caught up in little, not bad words, but just, I should just cut it off really quickly. So don't answer a fool to their folly. It means anybody acting foolish, talking like a child as an adult, don't say nothing. It's not worthy of any, any kind of, uh, they don't deserve any admiration as far as any attention. Do not respond, but do respond in one way. Give them God's wisdom and then cut it off. Turn the lights out on them after you give God's truth to their lies and what they're what they coming against you with, with foolish talk of the world. You know, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. When I was a child, I lied. When I was a child, you know, um, I stole, you know. And there's a lot of people out here who still are little children, even in grown older bodies, because they don't have their Father in Heaven to direct them. I love you guys. I hope you all have a great day. And to be praised here means to be boastful. 
be boasted about joyfully. Be boasted about joyfully. God is not only worthy of our contempt, com, com, uh, let's see, contempt, Contemplative worship, but also to be celebrated for what he does for us every day. Give him praise and thanks, guys, here for what he does. Every breath, every heartbeat, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. If that was the case, every breath, thank you, thank you with every breath, right? Let everything with um, breath praise the Lord, and that's what we should do, guys. Give God the glory, give him your attention and um, all your blood, sweat, tears, your focus, your energy, because he's blessed you with it for a perfect purpose and reason was to serve him and Jesus showed the way. Follow Jesus, not man, and follow the example of David back here in 2 Samuel chapter 22. Give God praise when he gives you the victories. Give him praise even when you're under attack because he's just trying to make you stronger. Peace be with you. I love you all. This has been a Bible Minute, Bible minute with the Mac, and it's diddly diddly D. And uh, I just brought the good word to thee. Hallelujah. <laughs> Have a blessed day, everybody. Woohoo! Hallelujah.